Splendid Twilight. The naughty version. Bad Boy 97. Journal Entry 1. Oh, how no one understands the dark, brooding pink stirring in my loins. I couldn't concentrate in high school again today. Thoughts of him distracted me from my composition writing class. How could I possibly worry about fundamentals of English grammar stuff? Stupid. Wait. <laughs> English grammar stuff. Stupid. When <laughs> there's a tall, sexy devil stalking the spooky nights, I wish he would stalk me. I know some people would say that I am a silly prince. That he <laughs> that he would devour my soul or drive me to madness. But they don't understand him like I do. I know he would not do this to me. And how could he? I'm his biggest, quote unquote. <laughs> you get it? Because biggest, get it? <laughs> wink, nuts, nuts, wink, 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 nuts. Okay. <laughs> Big, <laughs> biggest fan, winky face. Oh, well. I suppose I'll just have to prove them all wrong. And that's journal entry number one. Journal entry number two. Woe is me. Must I be alone for all of eternity? Doomed to wander the cruel world in my misunderstoodedness. I spent the entire afternoon in the cemetery after school today, drawing the sacred symbol on each and every tombstone. The circle of darkness with the edge of also darkness. <laughs> Awaiting for him to run into my arms. I even wore my outfit. My extra special. Sailor Moon mini skirt and thigh high socks. I must have ridden my tricycle around those gravestones a thousand times before I ran out of I see. How could he not be enticed by me? Am I not enticing? Of course I am. It must have been those fart faces who showed up and interrupted my unholy ritual. They called me names. Really mean names that cut into my soul like razors. I tried not to cry, but I could not stop myself. If you don't stop, if, if you don't stop, shouldn't make fun of the black forces that dwell within me. I yelled at them before they started throwing bananas at me. What? <laughs> bananas that cut deeper than any black razor of black blackness. I rode my tricycle home as fast as I could. On the way, I checked my vampire Pikachu watch. It was almost six o'clock. My mom was being worried sick. Then I got home and she gave me some spaghetti. Yummy. Oh, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> that was uh, entry number three. <laughs> I just took a bubble bath, and now I need to check my emails for the rightful acceptance of my creepypasta submission. Let's look. Nothing. Anger and other dirty talk. How could it not be posted yet? I submitted it yesterday afternoon. How long do I have to wait for the world to see my spectacular greatness? I know that jerky face administrator It's jealous of my uncanny ability to write a book tells a melancholy spookiness. Of course that's what it is. Nobody could pass up my masterpiece unless they were intimidated. It was called The Grand Adventures of the Totally Awesome and in no way at all homoerotic sparkly vampires. It was so awesome. I guess I'm just going to have to send that jerk a bunch of emails outlining why he's such a jerk. Then he'll see. Then I'll we'll see. But it's almost eight. And I need to snuggle into bed next to my Jeff to kill a body pillow. And let my 
darky, dark light of darkness, take me to the ultimate darkness of dreamland. <laughs> End of Journal 3. <laughs> Fanboy 97. <laughs> journal Entry 4. I woke up from that dream again. I just had to write it down this time. It was one where I'm lying there, still in my bed, completely naked, when the wind blows my bedroom window open, and then a beautiful slender body of his floats in, hovering above me, tempting me with the prospect of sweet, sweet day passing. Come to me, sweet prince, I say to him as he lowers himself gracefully. His black suit stretched tight across his lovely form. Do you know how long I've been waiting for you? I ask him. He never says a word. Oh, the strong and silent type, aren't you? I whisper out his necktie, pulling his face's face against mine. And we start making out, and it was sexy. Then, after like an hour, I swear straight back into his earballs. How about you take off that suit and show me what those tentacles can really do? <laughs> when I woke up, my seats are all sticky. Fanboy <laughs> 97, Journal Entry 5. <clears throat> oh, whimsy. Heart, 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 heart. That's a waste of point. I don't even know how to explain it. But after that hot, sticky dream, I just couldn't go back to sleep. So I kind of just stayed awake and sent filthy complaints to that jerk face administrator. Well, I got this sense, you know, a most arousing sense at that. And I got this feeling that I needed to look out of my window. And when I did, it was him, Slender Man was watching me from across the street. I knew it was him at once. He's impossible to mistake. The tall, thin body and most fabulous of suits. He was just standing there motionless, expressionless, beckoning to me. Oh, I better get back to the window. He's still out there and I ain't depressed by him. Bad nipples against the glass to keep him interested. I'll come back later to write how it went. Oh God, I feel as giddy as a schoolgirl at the gynecologist. The next day, Officer Stinson is standing at the scene of the crime. His partner, Officer Drake, approaches him with a cup of coffee in his each hand. So, what in the heck and hoot nanny happened here? Asked Drake as he glances over the carnage. A pine in the tree sectioned off by yellow hazard tape is the body of a young boy. His torso impaled on one of the many jagged branches. On the ground below him, there are several plastic bags filled with what is assumed to be some of the boy's organs. They include eyes, kidneys, liver, pancreas, gallbladder, lasagna, and several fingers. Officer Stinson hands. Oh, wait, what? What? Uh, Officer, St uh, Officer Stinson hands his partner a piece of paper covered in blood. We found his nail to the tree, says Officer Stinson to Drake. I think you know what it means. Drake reads a note. Each letter spelled out in crimson. You know, crimson. It means blood. No means no, Drake reads aloud. Great googly moogly. Not another one of these sickos. Let's be the third one this year. And it does explain why the kid up there is wearing a dress. Officer Stinson looks back up into the tree. The boy is in fact still wearing his Sailor Moon outfit. Yeah, says Stinson. We're dealing with one twisted pervert here, all right. We checked this kid's journal earlier this morning. Look like he was getting ready to try and date rape center, man. Drake shakes his head in disgust. Sweet zombie Jesus. Kids these days mess around on the interwebs, thinking that it couldn't happen to them. Then all of a sudden, old Slendy, yet sick and tired, being sexually harassed. Can anyone really blame him for resorting to this? 
Sensei looks down at his feet with a somber look on his face. No, no, I don't think anyone really can. But we gotta look at it this way. At least for now, we can take comfort in knowing that this nightmare is finally over. Jason Boynichry coughs out splattering of blood. Why? Why don't you love me? He chokes out without hesitation. Officers Drake and Stinson pull out their sidearms from their holsters, emptying the clips into the whining fanboy. When the dust settles, Stinson looks back to Drake. Okay, now it's over. The end. <laughs>